Today it's the return of something I haven't done in a long time. It's the return of the trading 212 rate my pie. I put it out on Instagram the other day for people to submit their pies to me so I can take a good look inside their pie and see if there's anything juicy. Today I've got two pies for you, two people on Instagram, uh, Alex Saruti and Pixas. We'll get into them in a second. And all you've got to remember from today is this is not financial advice. This is just my opinion. It's a bit of fun to go through people's pies, tear them apart and see if there's anything fun we can do with them. And I'll give them a little score at the end. You gotta remember my portfolio is only 0.44% up in Unrealized Games. We're having a pretty good week at the minute. Currently sitting at a total value of 59,270. We're down below that 60,000 at the moment and I'll have a portfolio review coming up in the next couple of weeks. But my portfolio is a portfolio that's based on future income. I'm looking for dividend growth stocks that might happen in the future. I'm looking for quality stocks, I'm looking for moats and this, is, this portfolio is what I think might return that. This is all the money I have in the world. I haven't made any other portfolios anywhere else. This is my retirement. That's that's it. But what I'm looking for when I'm looking at my own pie and other people's pies is the level of risk that it involves. This is a very basic version of the Howard Marks risk scale and it details roughly where we think different types of securities fit in the whole risk premium system. We've got treasuries at the bottom, which are almost guaranteed no loss except to inflation. Then we've got high grade bonds. That's bonds and debt that comes from high quality companies. Then we've got our quality stocks. This is where I try to make investments. This is where I try to put my money in those high quality dividend paying high cash flow stocks. Then we've got the aggressive stocks, a bit more like Tesla. And if you really want to go aggressive, you've got those more, you know, those speculation. That's where this group fits in. And then we've got high yield bonds. That's debt from companies that are very, very risky. So you take your Nikola's, you take your workhorses, Peloton, any debt that those guys take out, you can buy that debt for quite a high coupon. At the moment, I think you can get 10, 12% yield off these uh, bonds at the moment, but there's a good chance that they'll default or pay for them early and you need to be aware of that. And finally, we have VC, we have private equity. This is usually off the stock market. These are high, high risk securities to have your money in. 95% of all private equity firms go bust, but you can invest in securities like this on apps like Cedars. So today we've got two pies to review. We've got the long-term retirement pie and we've got the dividends pie from Ovis and the Ginger Investor. These two came to me from Instagram. We've got the first one, which is Travels of a Ginger Roadie. Alex Saruti, he's a roadie. It looks like he's working with Dua Lipa at the moment. No idea who that is, but I, I imagine it's someone big. Um, he's got a uh, pretty hot missus and uh, he likes to take selfies of himself after coitus. Um, you shouldn't have given me your Instagram, mate. But he's a family man. He looks like late 20s, early 30s. Sorry if I've just aged you there. And he's made a big long-term retirement pie. He did tell me that he's got about 10,000 pounds in this pie. Uh, it's for his long-term retirement. And this is split 50-50 between this pie and his sip pie, which I assume and I'm making a lot of assumptions here, is a sort of Vanguard, Hargreaves Lansdowne pie, and it's made up mainly of index funds. He did tell me that his 50-50 pie was made up of mostly index, index funds. I don't know what index funds they are, but uh, it sounds pretty smart. And with the other half of his money, so his other £10,000, he's made this long-term retirement pie. And what I've got to say right off the bat, it looks very familiar. <laughs> That's pretty good. A lot of it is very similar to what I would buy. So this 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 one could go quite well. Uh, according to Train212, it's an annual rate of return of 17.9%. I wouldn't really believe this too much. It, they, they make a lot of assumptions in here. But according to at least the past five years, this pie has returned 17.9%. So historically, it's doing quite well. Looking down the list, we've got a high concentration here of the top sort of five or 10 companies in the world. And then we've got lower concentrations of pretty much high quality, 
kind of diversified stocks. Remember, we're looking towards this chart at the moment and we're looking to see where it fits on here. We're, we're, we're kind of fitting in here. What most people would say is a less risky portfolio is if it's a mix of these high quality stocks, high grade bonds and treasuries. Usually people like to do a 60-40 split somewhere in between here. But when we're younger, you know, when we're in our early 30s or even our early 20s, we could be going for these high quality stocks. And it looks like that's what um, Ginger Invest has done here, Alex. Uh, he's gone for Apple right at the top there. I wonder when he bought it. If he bought that two years ago, Jesus, he's made a lot of money there. And that would be why it's now 9% of his allocation. We've got Microsoft at 8% allocation, Visa at 6%, and Alphabet at 6% again. This is the big tech top. So we're going high on growth. We're going high on past growth. There's an argument out there to say, you know, is this, are these stocks going to continue growing as fast as they can? Can they be up there at the top forever? I, I, I think this is, this is more than reasonable. It's what a lot of people are doing these days. One problem I might have with this top section is valuation, but I've been hidden in a box for the past couple of months. And I don't think the valuations on these stocks are as bad as they used to be KLA Corp, Corp. I remember being, you know, 20, 25, even 30 PE at certain times. And right now we're coming back down to 16 PE. Apple also looks like it's still pretty high. And if it does have this flattening of earnings that's expected over the next couple of years, you can expect an 11% 11, 11 downturn. That's not a brilliant one to keep at the top of your portfolio. Obviously, this is all based on speculation. Nobody really knows what's going to happen to the economy as as this heads forward. But I, I just can't get behind this this uh, whole valuation of it here. However, Google, which he does have in here as well, is pretty sound right now. Um, we're looking at 19 PE for a big tech stock. It's a uh, it's it's lost a lot of valuation re recently. And if it only comes back down to a 15 PE or 15 peg ratio, you still gain 4.1%. So there's there's something there in Google, which is why I own that one. Coming down the list, he's got 21 slices in his pie. Broadcom really does appear to be very undervalued. A uh, huge upside of 30.6% year on year and a dividend yield of 3.07, which, you know, is just going to get you through. However, I'm I, I'm worried about Broadcom. I've, I've been worried about Broadcom for some while. I don't know what's going to happen to them when... Apple and the other uh, mobile phone manufacturers start going over to their uh, their integrated model, their vertically integrated systems, buying their own chips, using their own devices. I do wonder what's going to happen to Broadcom in this case. With that, I just feel like there's too much risk to put loads into my portfolio. That's just me. There's a few awesome companies right in here. Bristol Myers Squibb is a great company. I think it's had a massive uh shoot up recently cisco systems a very interesting stock to have in your portfolio on this one lots of people don't like cisco systems because of its huge drop in the 2000s but it's a double a minus credit rated company it's got a very low debt to equity it pays a dividend of 3.21 percent it's this shallow growth it is growing but it doesn't grow by a particular amount if we look at the historical performance of uh, Cisco, it doesn't outperform the market. Long term over the past 20 years, it's fallen behind the market by 2%. So Cisco Systems, from a historical point of view, doesn't really make too much sense. And it's due to this slow growth in earnings over the past 20 years. It's a very stable stock. It's shooting off cash, which is lovely. But this thing might not beat the market. And what we're looking at if we're trying to get into this, and it's what Ginger Investor is obviously trying to do. He's got 50% of his money in index funds. He's following the market. And he's trying to get that 8.5% every year. With this half of it, he's basically, it seems, trying to buy the market, buy high quality stocks, buy the S&P 500, but also just pick the ones he likes so he does eventually uh, outperform it. So this this side is just trying to get that outperformance. And historically, yeah, that's what's happened. The uh, long-term retirement pie historically has performed 17.9%, whereas the S&P 500 has only performed 8.5%. UK winners, League and General, Digital Realty Trust, this looks like a familiar portfolio. And he's going to make Steve D from the uh, Playing FTSE podcast happy here by having Forterra and Elseg in there. Forterra is a brick-making company here in the UK. Uh, rival is Ibstock, which won 
which is one I was familiar with in the past. Uh, Steve D loves it because he has uh, experience in the building trade and he sends me pictures of Forterra packaging all the time while he's on his building sites. So he's got that circle of competence going on there. Pays a dividend yield of 5.28%, which is huge. And has a pretty low debt. That must be one of the reasons why Steve's into this one because it's uh, pretty low debt. However, earnings aren't growing too well. It had that horrible dip through 2020, which most companies had, and the stock price is pretty volatile. And over the past five years, the stock hasn't really gone anywhere, only 6.1%. This though is all about looking forward to the future. If you can take this year of poor earnings going to ending 2023 and we can keep it under a PE of 10, you potentially have a PE expansion here of 8.9% every year. So there's a possibility here of uh, good earnings coming out of Portero in the future and maybe quite a good British company. And I think they've got pretty good cash flows. It can be choppy, uh, hard going through 22, 23, but obviously coming out of it, especially as the UK needs to build more and more houses more, more quickly because the affordability of houses is absolutely terrible right now. The only way we're going to be able to make housing more affordable for younger people is to buy increasing the amount of houses that we've got, creating more supply and easing that demand. So overall here, we have a pretty standard high quality stock portfolio. We hit it at right in the middle of our risk-free rates graph. Um, I like it. This is, I can't really see any ridiculously bad uh, speculative stocks here. Maybe I would remove Cisco because uh, I don't like the slow growth and maybe we'd uh, look at Universal Music as well for taking out because I think that's going to be a play on something else that happened a few years ago. But the rest of it looks pretty sound. The only way I think you might be able to improve this is by making Steve D happy and putting in a little bit more growth. We've got a lot of the growth at the top here. We could maybe even this out, make this a flat, you know, 5% all the way through maybe. Uh, so you've got some nice LSEG growing very, very well, making lots of acquisitions uh, coming really uh, things are coming up really positive for these guys so you could maybe increase these to five percent even it all out all out maybe not have as much exposure to the high valuation stocks like apple this is all opinion though this is just uh, discussing options discussing information and there's no real right answer here we're heading in similar directions i think me and the ginger investor are so overall i'd probably score this a little bit worse than mine a 7.5 out of 10. i class mine as an 8 out of 10 because i don't have any bonds i've got that little bit of higher risk than uh, high grade bonds and treasuries i have no gilts or anything in my portfolio and some would argue that i probably should have but we young ish we've still got 20 years of uh, investing ahead of us so we can take a little bit more risk by having equity only properties but we have to be very aware that this can go down in the future we can lose 50 percent of our value in this in this uh, market especially with the stocks that we've got here Next, I've got Ovis's pie. He came to me as Pixas. He looks pretty young in his portfolio, so I'd expect him to have a little bit more riskier stocks in, in his portfolio. Uh, you know, he's got a bit of jizz still left in him, so he'll be, nope, he hasn't. He's um, gone for a dividend pie. And it looks like he's gone for a really classic dividend pie right here. <laughs> Wow. We've got realty income at the top, 9% of his portfolio in, in realty income. Realty income is not a guaranteed stock, guys. It's the classic dividend portfolio, you know, hardcore. And I think anybody who's really into dividends should probably have a bit of exposure to the real estate market and realty income. But it's it. I think we're relying on it a lot. We've It's done very well through the 2010 to 2020 period. But the, the time may run out one day, so we ha just have to be careful. Let's not rely on this. BAE Systems is one company I still wish I owned. I had to sell it for my own reasons, and I regret it badly because the whole reason I bought it was because I expected another war to come soon. And it's landed right on our doorstep, and BAE Systems is making a mint out of it, an absolute mint. This whole portfolio looks pretty... Um, yeah, very, very dividend heavy. 
Uh, we've gone for the high dividend yield. It's returned 5.56%, and that includes uh, dividend reinvestment over the past few years. So it's showing that the dividend aristocrat style of investing doesn't necessarily return those great returns it may do in the future it you know oil really did surprise us through 2022 it may do in the future but it's it, the yield isn't what's to be relied on in my opinion in my opinion it's those early dividend growth and dividend initiators they're the ones that make the money historically that's what the evidence has shown to me by reading those research papers ltc properties you Lever, GSK, classic dividend stocks, Rio Tinto's hooker dividend cut recently. Uh, we, we all saw that coming really. It, it had a great time through 2020 where the uh, iron and copper prices went up ridiculously, made a lot of money, gave back to shareholders. That's what Rio Tinto does. It's a cyclical stock and I think we're going to see a backward pedal on the cycle soon. I'll be ready to buy this stock as soon as it does. 3M uh, recently had uh, a run back on its court cases it's got a court case at the moment with the US Army uh, where it sold some earplugs which didn't work and it's given given a lot of people hearing loss but they found out apparently in most of the cases someone said even 90% of the cases the uh, staff that wore the earplugs haven't suffered any f uh, hearing loss that's a uh, brought back a little bit of hope that 3M isn't going to go bankrupt basically. The, it, this lawsuit could uh, take a year's worth of revenue away from them. They would have to refinance uh, to save themselves from this from this fine if it comes. It so far hasn't looked very good but there's a glimmer of hope that's come through. It's got the classics, Elgin, Tritax big packs in here and then we start to go to renewables. Be careful of these two renewables here. They have quite high management fees. You just need to look at and be aware of those but they do pay a good dividend and as long as they grow, they outgrow their management fees, it should be okay. Diageo is a UK dividend favorite, a dividend yield of 2.17. It owns a lot of different UK based brands but it does have a lot of debt uh, great credit rating i didn't realize that always always trades at a premium though usually diageo is trading at 19 times earnings it's currently trading at 22.52 times earnings so this thing looks to me like it's overvalued that is a very simplistic way of looking at things but if you do catch diageo on at a time where it falls below its peg ratio you can get a quite a sweet 13.6% return year on year. Performance though, historically, it hasn't outperformed the S&P 500 and it doesn't get any better if we shorten the time span, it actually loses the S&P 500. It's a safe-ish place to put your money if you can call any stock safe. It's a company that's got a lot of brands, it's got that moat, it's got uh, oh, it's got a lot of fingers in the bar business, so it's got also got that switching cost mode, not just only its brands. And like any safe dividend stock, it trades at quite a premium. And at the bottom, it looks like here we've got a little bit of a risky stock in Airtel Africa. Quite a good one. Lots of corruption going on in this one, uh, but there's a lot of people that like it. It's making a lot of money. Pembina Pipeline, BP, Shell, Poly International, they are all oil stocks. This guy is going for that dividend and I bet he's done so, so well over the past few years. It's just a shame he's allocated so little to them. Not a lot of confidence here in the oil stocks, even though he's been in them. He must be looking at like, yeah, you must be like nearly 50% up on these stocks, mate. That's uh, pretty cool. Evraz, of course, is down at 1% because you can't trade that at the moment due to the sanctions on uh, the Russia-Ukraine thing. Overall though, we are not very well diversified in the stocks. We do have high quality stocks. You know, they, you can't doubt that these companies are quality. There's a lot of cash flow going through here. There's a lot of cash being given back to the shareholders, which I love to see. But there, there isn't growth. And what you've got to have when you're looking at stocks, particularly dividend growth and dividend reinvestment stocks, I think you've got to have some growth in there as well. You can't just rely on getting those dividends, especially the guy looks like he's about 25, something like that, maybe even younger. So he could be taking a little bit more risk. 
not advice just my opinion and just what others would say and the fact that you've got a 5.56 annual rate of return here shows that it's not beaten the market over the past few years and it's with the slow growth of AT&T, 3M, cyclicals like uh, Rio Tinto, Aviva slow growth, uh, Diageo slow growth, BP Shell are all going to have slow growth in uh, coming uh, months. There isn't a lot here to look forward to as far as the future of the world goes. So I would rate this pie a score of five just because I'd like to see a little bit of growth in here. This is That's my decision what I would make on it. Pixas did message me on Instagram though and explain that he does have another growth pie with a lot more money that he's using to save up for a house deposit. Probably not the best idea to put your house deposit into a growth pie. It'd be interesting to see that. But he also says he's got about 3k in crypto as well ethereum bitcoin that sort of thing and that's quite a lot he reckons he's got about 25 grand in this pie that that money isn't likely to go anywhere really it's not going to capital appreciate at a ridiculous rate but i imagine if he holds on to it for another 20 years these stocks very reasonably could be around for another 20 years he's still going to end up at a goal of having that retirement money uh, if if compounding goes exactly the way it has done for the past hundred years. Thanks very much for watching everyone. And if you wanted to get your pie featured on this channel, you can email me at paulbriscoeinvesting at gmail.com or message me on Instagram. I'll always be ready to answer questions on there.